Now, I want to get back to the situation in Ferguson. There was chaos overnight. It was the one-year anniversary of Michael Brown's death, and it began with a march in his honor. It ended with a lot of gunfire. 40 to 50 shots exchanged. Tea Party 365's David Webb is with us. We hear that the shots were fired at some plainclothes police officers who yes. pursued the suspect. He's in the hospital, etc., etc. Does this amount to a war in our inner cities on the police? It's not as simple as just a war on police, Stu, but it is a permissive environment in which it is okay to take on the police further than arguing, which people have done for, for decades since they've been around. Look at what happened in Alabama, where you have a cop pistol whipped by a black man, a 34-year-old, basically a career criminal, and they start posting on Facebook offensive posts, you know, glad the police got his, you know, butt kicked. And then you go to Ferguson. You've got a friend of Michael Brown's, or is reported, and a bunch of thugs, criminals, and gangsters, would, by all appearances, they're involved with each other. They come, the police come, they're wearing police vests, identify them, they're on marked car, and they shoot at the police. Well, first, if you shoot at the police, what do you think's going to happen? Thank God these cops stop them from shooting more. That's a war. It, well, I mean, that's, you're uh, opening fire on, on police officers. Right, and you're opening fire on the people around. When you're near a crowd, and you've got an untrained criminal, friend of Michael Brown's, that's firing. He doesn't have the fire control. Not that the police, they have better. They're trained. Thankfully, they shot him. It's, you know, and what we now have is a situation that is going to devolve even further because the charlatans who lead the Black Lives Matter crew, the, the useful idiots to some degree that are involved, and the intellectual sheep, that are running around in this movement take away from the people who want to actually fix problems. I talked to that business point. owners in Ferguson. I talked to the people there that want things fixed. West Florissant, South Florissant, and other areas around there when I was there still look like war zones. But Buildings are not being rebuilt. Jobs are not being uh, yeah, restarted. But, you know, what, what, what problem wants to be fixed? Is it police community relations or is it the extraordinary level of violent crime within the black community? It's, it's, That's the it's, original it's, problem, it's, isn't it's it? It's both and more. It's economic in that. It's crime, community policing. It's education, broken education system. If you're raised to believe that you have no other option, and you are that kid, you become a young man, you have a better chance of, hey, I can sell drugs or commit crimes, buy new sneakers and do whatever. Stuart, you can get ahead. Can I yeah. just give you this? Sure. Some protesters in the crowd actually are saying we're ready for what? We're ready for war. So, David, how should the police handle that? They yeah. should respond with tough, effective policing. Mistakes they made in the beginning, a but, year but, ago. Wait a minute. If they did that... If they, they could be in court themselves. You know what? In this environment, Unfor in this unfortunately, climate, they go to court. They got the hands tied. Police departments, which are typically mayoral agencies, especially in larger cities, yes. their politicians, their leaders need to stand up. Commissioners need to stand up for their cops. This, is, to a war, it is a fight. You're not going to win the war on police by backing off mm -hmm. and not having effective policing. You don't, you, look, there are bad cops like there are in any organization. We've seen that play out. Cincinnati, doubtful, good shooting. Charleston, South Carolina, that shooting there are a lot more on a daily basis there are more lawful interactions yes they're dealing with the worst of the worst at times or a ticket whatever the range is yeah democrats are not dealing with it though are they no I they're mean, not martin o'malley had groveled because he'd said all lives matter and then i don't know whether we've got the video handy but bernie sanders at a, shouted a, down at Seattle, a rally mm -hmm. his his, his uh, rally was totally taken over yeah, by just two women why did he let his rally get taken over by two women for christ's sakes bernie yeah. grow up and take them on martin well, o'malley by the off. way one of the biggest yeah, forces he just away. here's martin o'malley who caused the most much of the problem in baltimore yeah. in the years that he was the mayor he had a roundup of the community some 20 percent arrested walking wild black he wanted to look tough on crime so he could run for governor so for all you black lives matter crew in baltimore look at the failure of liberal progressive leadership for 40 years and and it's not black or white it's bad leadership for Martin O'Malley, certainly not black. Stephanie Rawlings, Blake, uh, and the yeah. others, they're black. So come on, deal with it for but what it is. It? Back to Bernie Sanders. He was unwilling to shove those two black women off the stage and say, this is my rally, well, and not, I'm going to speak. ready for prime time. Well, he's not, he's right. Right. But which, which Democrat right. will stand up and say, you're wrong on this? Right, because Bill Clinton took on Sister Soldier, remember? Yeah, your Sister Soldier moment. But Clinton, right. got it. Clinton had gravitas with blacks. 
you know, the purported first black president. The problem we have here, back mm -hmm. to the war on this, is it's in that terms of a war. Police officers are being protective of not only their careers, their families, if they're yeah. sued. You know, in New York City, for instance, you can actually be called out if someone feels aggrieved. Yes. <laughs> That is true. Feels? Okay. Feels. David, why are you such a stranger to this program? Yeah. I, I just don't understand. <laughs> it's because this guy named Stu Varney wakes me up early in the morning and says, Hey, Dave, you're coming over to my show. <laughs> there you go. Anytime. anytime. Uh, and look, you've got Emac. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great, great stuff. Great television. Uh, David, thank you very much indeed. So appreciate it. All right.